Hello, writers. I'm Josiane Fortin, and today I'm interviewing two authors. So two for the price of one today. It's so exciting. So I have Maryam Boltwin and Ashley Jackson Thompson. So welcome to the show. And they each self-published a book that just came out in June. So Maryam self-published Caregiver 2.0. And Ashley uh, published Lost Travel Found, Turning Pain into Purpose. So thank you so much for being on the show. And I want to hear about both of you. And also, why is it that you come in a package? Like, why did you want to be here together? <laughs> Ashley, <laughs> this question is for you. <laughs> Um, thank you, first of all, for having us, both of us, on your show today. Um, I will say that I jokingly say uh, Miriam and I come as a two-for-one special deal. Yes. <laughs> um, Miriam is the older sister that I never knew I had, <laughs> uh, and we just work so well together even though she is based in the Netherlands and I'm here in the United States, um, our uh, journeys have been uh, almost the same. I mean, the path has been different, but uh, what connected us was basically our caregiving journeys. And, you know, when she told me that she was writing a book and I told her, oh my goodness, I had started, but I got frustrated and put it to the side. And she encouraged me to pick my pen back up and meet that pen to paper. And here we are. <laughs> it's so fun that you self-published during the same month. So you were really like, probably like encouraging each other, like an accountability partners. How did that help both of you on your writing journey to have someone like doing the same thing at the same time? Well, we, we like Ashley said, we encourage each, each other. And when you're writing a book, both of us have the same writing coach, by the way. And we got a lot of homework. When you're writing a book, you get a lot of homework, right? So I remember Ashley calling me, Miriam, I have so much homework. Did you get that much homework? And I said, <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And, you know, it was so funny. Funny isn't the right word, but it was so good that we could encourage each other. The result is that our books are published today and we did self-publishing which is another way you know, to, to make sure that your book is out there in the world, that your story is out of your belly and that your story is <clears throat> helping others. In our case, we wrote our story, first of all, to get it out of our belly, but also to help others. So it's, it's a wonderful you know, idea that 10 months ago, both of us started writing our books, our story, and now we can say we are authors. Yes. So yes, we've been celebrating the <laughs> last two weeks, <laughs> drinking a lot of champagne <laughs> and celebrating. So yeah, it's a wonderful feeling. Yeah, it's awesome. And I'm just curious, how did you meet? Because you live in different countries. So how did you become friends? <laughs> Absolutely. So I always like to, Miriam cracks up when I tell the story. So <laughs> uh, basically I met Miriam, how I met my husband, Facebook. It's <laughs> a Facebook and is amazing, amazing place to find husbands, wives, friends, cousins, and new sisters. <laughs> like I found Miriam. <laughs> Um, it wasn't until I started my journey of uh, basically telling my journey on Facebook that Miriam found me through me starting to voice my journey. And we just connected because we have the same loves, the same likes. You know, she took care of her husband. I took care of my husband. Uh, we love to travel. We love to eat. We love to drink all the champagne. Like we have so many things, even on a you know deeper level, um, as we keep 
uh, talking and growing in this friendship that uh, when the world opens back up, watch out Netherlands, watch out United States, because the <laughs> sisters are going to meet and probably <laughs> shake the airport. <laughs> awesome. And so how long did each of you take for, for your book to write it? Was it a long process? I know, Ashley, you had started something and then you just stopped. Like, was it really long to write it? For me, uh, I would say it's been probably almost a year uh, because I started in May of 2020 and I pushed it to the side. I started at the beginning of May of 2020 and pushed it to the side at the end of that same month. I didn't pick it back up until Miriam encouraged me to probably about August of last year. Okay. Yeah. How about you, Miriam? I started writing my book on August 22nd last year. So almost 10 months ago. I started writing and <clears throat> so many people tell us, you know, you ladies, it's amazing what you've done to write and publish a book within a year. Yes. Most of the times you hear that authors or writers are busy for one or two years, longer than a year mm -hmm. before they publish their book, sometimes even five years before they publish their book. And we were, I think the reason why we published this early is because we wanted our story to go out in the world. People yeah. need to know what caregivers go through. Yeah. And that was uh, something that pushed us to write our story, to get it done and to, to do the self-publishing. Yeah. And also because you, you our, gathered our, our, a support system, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, you have like a, a friend to write with and you hired a coach. Like, do you have like other people on your team to help you? Um, as far as like an extra type of help, um, you know, definitely with uh, just social media presence, you know, we help each other. You know, if we're not sharing our own books, I'm sharing Miriam's book. Like, hey, you got Lost Travel Found, but go get Caregiver caregiver 2.0 and she's doing the same for me hey you've got caregiver 2.0 but go get lost travel found you know that's and Miriam and I just discussed this yesterday uh you have to as a self-publishing author you have to just be ahead of your own marketing you are your own marketing team so you constantly have to advertise you constantly are having to to share it um and especially with how Instagram and Facebook logarithms work, some people don't even see it. Like, I can't even tell you how many people are still buying books because they're seeing posts even now, even though I launched it five days ago, they're like, huh, you wrote a book? How did I miss this? And Miriam has said the same thing. You have to keep posting because you don't know, and at different times, because you don't know who's watching Facebook or Instagram at what time. So yeah, very good advice. And do you feel it's um, a plus to be two marketing two books like you each self promote and then promote for the other person? Like how has that changed uh, from I know you haven't maybe experienced being by yourself promoting a book, but how do you feel it's different like being two instead of just being one? What, what I experience, what we experience, sorry, is that people love it, that we support each other. Mm -hmm. And people are, are more willing to buy both books because um, both of us are caregivers and you don't often hear caregiver stories. You often hear the stories of the patients and now they can read about the stories of the, the one who's taking care of the patient. And like I mentioned before, supporting each other is something people love to say to see we are on a journey we are on a mission to let the world know what caregivers go through and that's our word you know um and yeah people just love to see how we support each, each other and that's why many times we choose to do the interviews together what advice would you like to share to someone who's looking to self-publish be be patient with yourself give yourself some grace. There were times where I would 
you know, like get so overwhelmed that I would have to get up and go for a walk, go listen to some music, take some breaks away from the, the process. I mean, we're talking from writing to the process of uploading it to uh, get it formatted to getting it, you know, then published on Amazon or wherever you're wanting to publish, give yourself that grace because you are, you're doing it yourself. So you just have to breathe at times. You're not having that big box publishing house, do all of this work for you. You're doing it. So just remember that you are doing a great work. Just take your time. Yeah. And and try to try to set a date but be realistic don't set a date after six months you can do that but you will get frustrated because the self-publishing part it consumes a lot of energy (laughs) Yeah. yeah So be realistic when setting a day. The reason why I say this is that, for instance, if you know, okay, I'm starting writing today, set a date, June 23rd, 2022, and work backwards. Yeah. So you can see your progress. Yeah. Awesome. And I do want to piggyback yes. off a little bit of what uh, Miriam just said, if I can, yes. uh, with, with setting a date. Uh, because Ashley wasn't realistic in the beginning. (laughs) I started really writing in August, right? And I said, you know what? Because my caregiver story has to do with the love of my life. I'm like, I'm going to make this a Valentine's Day release. Valentine's Day came and went. It didn't get released. I said, okay, I'm going to do it in May. It wasn't even formatted and ready by then still. So you have to give yourself a date, like Miriam said. And I'm just giving you a real life, honest look into what happened with me. So, but when it did get released, when it did get published, ended up being the most perfect date for me. So in it all, it will work out just don't get frustrated with yourself. Yeah. And you must have both of you a lot of obligations, like from being caregivers, like, I don't know what else, like work or family. So how did you manage to find some time to write? Scheduling and organizing. That's something I talk about in my book as well as a caregiver. And I think everybody needs to schedule and organize. What I did, for instance, is I blocked every Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday morning to write. It was blocked. My door was closed. Okay. Until there was something really going on with my husband and my brother. I'm also the caregiver uh, to my brother. And that I did that as of August 22nd until May 31st, Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday. Did you have to ask for outside help for those uh, time blocks? Yes, of course. And that's also something I talk about asking for help. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I did need it. Uh, I did, sorry, need some help. And I asked for help um, because, you know, I couldn't do this alone. I couldn't do this alone. I needed help. I needed support. I needed help from Ashley. I needed help from my family, my husband, my brother, everyone. And I got so much support, you know, and all of the help, all of the scheduling, the organizing um, is resulted in my book, Caregiver 2.0 from Burnout to Powerhouse. And because I had a burnout earlier, couple of years years ago I learned that I should ask for help and schedule and organize yeah and you're a caregiver for yourself too like you have to take care of yourself exactly yeah and Ashley how about you how did you find time you know I I took some plays from Miriam's book uh you know scheduling that time and really sitting down with my husband and just letting him know, like, look, I'm about to embark on this 
journey, this pathway, and I need your help in the effect of when the door shut, that's me time. Like, give me my hour. Like, you can't come back here. Fix your own breakfast or fix your own lunch because these are my times, <laughs> you know, and he realized the, the journey that I was about to go down. So, you know, giving me that respect of my time that I needed to complete all the different homework that uh, my writing coach gave me and, you know, asking for, for help outside of, of him, you know, work, you know, I had to step away um, a couple times fr from work, you know, I need, I need some personal time because either I need to rest because I was up late, you know, writing, or I needed to step away just for my own peace of mind. So, you know, just I, what I've learned with asking for help is the worst that anybody can ever say is no. You give me a no, I'll figure out a different route. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's good. And what would you uh, say was your best promoting uh, tip or activity? I'd like to know, like, is it Facebook? Is it podcast? Like, what do you do? And what is the top activity that brings in sales for you? Wow. We have so many ways of promoting our books. We do it via social media, Twitter, uh, IG, Facebook. We do it via podcast interviews. We do it by going live on the social media platforms. We do it via emails. We do via signing books. Ashley went uh, the day after the launch. Uh, uh, she had a signing book day. There are so many, we are in different groups on Facebook promoting mm -hmm. our books. So book clubs, there are so many ways. And because we just launched our books, we can't really say which, which way is um, uh, we make the most sales of. Mm -hmm. I can't, I don't know about Ashley, but I can't see it yet. Okay. Family and friends have been the best buyers so far, but my book, has been launched not even for two weeks now. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's too early to tell. Yeah, um, I'll agree. I did an extensive pre-order. I, I had like a pre-order um, on my website for about two months before my full launch. And I think that helped, um, you know, get the word out, getting people excited. Uh, you know, just I... I don't think I can pinpoint any just one. I mean, Facebook is where I have probably most of my followers, but I, I can't pinpoint if it was, you know, Facebook or Instagram or um, I did happen to sell one off of TikTok. And I, when I tell you, I used to be just against TikTok. I was like, well, hey, at least that's one book. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> that's one more book that, you know, I sold off having that social media, but, you know, it, I can't, I, I would have to agree with Miriam. I can't exactly pinpoint because mine's only been launched for five days now. Okay, so, so yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I'm excited to see where it goes. Um, you know, multiple people have asked me um, for guidance on how to launch a book, where to start because of the festivities that Miriam and I surrounded with both of our book launches. I mean, I still have my stuff up from my book launch party. I had balloons and what's yeah. behind me. So just, I think when you are fun and you create excitement anywhere that you're going to pop up on social media, you're going to be seen. Okay. But yeah. I want to know what Part you said. In that TikTok, like, what did you do? Was it like 15 seconds, 60 seconds? And what did you say? It was, it was 60 seconds. And it was a combination of when I was uh, first receiving my big shipment, my first big shipment of books for the pre-ordered um, books. And just the combination of me signing 
and then you saw in the the um the packaging and you saw me walking to the post office and handing it to the post guy and I don't I don't know I, I and I've I've had four or five different TikTok videos now with my book but for some reason that one attracted someone to say hey I, I want your book can you give me your link yeah. and right away they they bought one from my personal website so I don't know I'm just going to keep doing it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I want to yeah. steal that idea because I always find myself like, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to share. And that leads to my next question. What do you share during your life? Because I have no idea what I'm supposed to say. Like, do you share a couple of stories that you're living? What do you say? Yeah. Reading from our books, just snippets. Yeah. Okay. Uh, reading and and what I wanted to say is that both Ashley and my book were the number one new releases on Amazon. Congrats. Yeah. And when I woke up this morning, that was a couple of weeks ago. When I woke up this morning, I saw that I'm number one again in the yes. new release. <laughs> so <laughs> if you can post that, people are more likely to buy. Yeah. You're a uh -huh. number one. So take a screenshot and post it on social media, put it in your emails, mention it in your emails. Like, did you get the number one release already? New release already. So um, what Ashley and I are planning to do is to go live and just read a snippet from our book, just 14 to 15 lines and just discuss what, what, what you just read. Okay. Discuss it, expand it. So I, the readers will know more. Yeah. And I feel like the more, and, and it's taken me a long time to get to this point. So, I mean, don't think I just woke up and decided to let everybody behind the curtain. Mm -hmm. It's taken me a long time to get to this point. But I feel like the more that I share my heart, and even if I drop a few tears, and trust me, I'm an ugly crier, but even if I drop <laughs> a few tears, because people feel, like watch that and like feel feel that so they're like well dang she's really you know speaking upon something here in this book I want to get it you know so um I will say another video that I posted my mom happened to watch me uh you film me opening my book for the first time and it even caught the mayor of my town and he shared it and I had a boost of pre-order sales at that point so you just never know like and I that was just a video that was meant for my mom and I but I wanted to share it because I just felt like I needed to share that to let people know like how much this book actually means to me like I didn't just throw it up on Amazon yeah. and say hey I, I publish a book go buy it and then move to the next thing no I've put my heart and my soul into this book and I want people to to see that and to to read it so I think sharing a personal story if if you are you know in the nonfiction realm you know sharing that that per, one, one of your personal stories or why did you write the book a lot of people want to know why yeah. like why should I buy this book yeah and people will feel it when you're yeah. reading it, when you're reading your story. And we have posted a lot of photos, a lot of pictures with our books. And soon you can see us on Ingram Spark books as yeah. well, because yeah. <laughs> they like both, both our pictures. Isn't that awesome? Both, yes. our, <laughs> both of us have been uh, number one new releases on Amazon. So it's... Um, it's amazing and we celebrate all of these accomplishments, but the main, our main reason for writing the book is getting the story out of our belly and helping others. Yeah, and That's now it. that you've written this book, so it's really fresh, it just came out, but do you have plans to write another book and do you want to write one together? Oh, this is the second time, Ashley, someone mentions this. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> together <laughs> that's good hmm that's a great idea huh <laughs> <laughs> i mean we'll never say never 
How about that? Yeah. We'll never say never. Um, but my gosh, that that's, does sound you know, great. Yeah, to be, <laughs> honest, to be honest, I when I finished um, this book, I didn't have the intention to write another book. And now that I've been asked a couple of times, will you write another book? I'm like, hmm. But first, I have to translate my book to, into Dutch because I've received so many questions of people living in the Netherlands and in Suriname. I would love to read your book, but will you translate it to Dutch? So that's the first thing I have to do. I had planned it for the end of the year to translate it to Dutch, but this weekend I will work on the translation already. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. And so how about you, Ashley? Did you have plans to write another book, either solo or with someone else? Um, so I, in my process, uh, because my book is not just for caregivers, it's for non-caregivers, it's for anyone on a grief and healing journey, as I've been calling it. Um, my mom has seen such a change in me in letting my my words and my emotions flow and having such a release that she has mentioned that she wants to maybe write something maybe not a huge book by any means but something where um that her and I could do together and I think there's such a need for specifically grief that we, her and I could expand upon together. Um, and it's been confirmed by a couple of my friends who have said they have been looking for grief books, but there's none out there that they can relate to. So will you please go ahead and write the second one? I haven't got my first one yet, but will you write the second one? So I'm like, okay, <laughs> okay, hold on. Let, let me bask in all of this glory yes. first with yes. my first one. But I do see my mom and I possibly working on something together, if not later this year, maybe um, early next year, for sure. Thank you so much for sharing everything with us today. It was so fun having both of you on the show. And if people want to know more about you, where can they connect with you? You can find me on my website, miriambaldewijn.com. Uh, my email address is support at miriambaldewijn.com. Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Miriam Baldwin. I'm everywhere with my name on Clubhouse Miriam Baldwin. And please make sure that you get the number one release <laughs> on Amazon. Both Caregiver 2.0 from Burnout to Powerhouse and Lost Travel Found. It's awesome. time to own your well being. Ashley, how about you? Yay. <laughs> All right. Well, you can find me at uh, timelessdreamevents.com. Uh, my email is at ashley at timelessdreamevents.com. And I, I do want to say if you would like a signed copy of my book, you can go to my website and order there and I'll send you a signed copy. Um, you can find me on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok at Timeless Dream Events. You can find me at Clubhouse at Timeless Dream. And you can get Lost Travel Found on Amazon, Kindle, Target, and Barnes and Noble's websites. Um, so it is everywhere um, for now. That is where you can find it and hopefully more to come soon. Thanks again for being on the show. I'll make sure to share all those links in the show notes. Thanks. Thank Bye. You. Thank you. Bye.